Hi there. Thanks for joining me to talk about taming spaghetti infrastructure. My name is Keith Morris. I'm the author of the O'Reilly book, Infrastructure as Code. I'm currently working on the third edition, which you can read on the O'Reilly Learning Platform if, you, uh, if you're interested, uh, or you can read the rough draft of that, rather. Uh, I'm also the uh, global infrastructure community lead for um, ThoughtWorks. Um, so that gives me exposure to a lot of different clients and environments and teams and, and what they do with their infrastructure. And that's kind of what I learned from um, and bring uh, to the book and to this kind of talk. So what I want to talk about today is um, basically how infrastructure and infrastructure as code and the environments that you, that, that you define with it tend to get really big and complex and messy um, and how we can deal with that, right? Some ways of thinking about that. So. When I talk about the kind of complexity of, of infrastructure um, and that kind of spaghetti um, as I talk about it, what I'm really talking about is having multiple environments. And I'll talk about different types of environments, why you end up with, with, with you know, more and more environments. Also, more workloads and different kinds of workloads that are running on your environments and more people running those workloads, using the infrastructure, building the infrastructure, building different parts of the infrastructure. So as an organization grows and as the kind of a state of infrastructure managed and defined by code grows, um, we have to think about how to how to deal with that. Right. And so some of the, the things <clears throat> that that we need to bring to bear are things about like, how do we design our infrastructure, and our infrastructure code? Um, how do we organize it? What kind of workflows do we use for our teams? And we need to keep a clear eye on the value um, that we're delivering with our infrastructure. Why are we building this infrastructure? So that's where I'd like to start is with the value side of it. Uh, there's a kind of a question of does infrastructure actually drive value? Well, you know, maybe it doesn't drive value, but it's an important part of value. Um, and I think that's something that often gets underplayed and we kind of underrate that. We think infrastructure is just generic. It doesn't matter too much just provide, you know, compute and networking and don't worry about it. But that can lead to, uh, you know, that, that kind of gap of everything between the, what's important to the customer and the business um, and all the way down to, to the actual infrastructure that we're building. That's a big gap and things often get lost in that gap. And it's very common to end up building infrastructure that doesn't suit the needs of the business very well. It doesn't suit whatever the strategy might be of the business or the organization. So you may be, you know, needing to grow um, into kind of multiple regions, or you may have kind of product strategies and so on. And, and you know, you really need to think about what um, you need from the infrastructure, what they're going to need from the infrastructure so that we can design the infrastructure and provide it um, in the best way possible. <clears throat> so I also often get asked, is, is cloud our, our strategy for platform, right? Is that all we need? Um, and the answer to that is not really, right? Cloud is the start of a platform strategy, but when you think about all the kind of things that are available from a cloud platform, all the different resources and services that they offer, then when you think about all the kind of tools and technologies that are out there, uh, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation has this great diagram that, that we often like to, to kind of make fun of um, just in the, the variety of things that are in there. And so this kind of tells us that actually we need to go a little bit further than just saying, well, uh, we've got the cloud and we've got all these kind of tools and stuff and people can just use whatever, right? We need to put a bit more thought into it. So as I say, the cloud is the start of an infrastructure strategy. <clears throat> this, uh, the last year's state of the DevOps report. Now, this is the, the report that comes from the, the, the folks at Dora um, who brought us the four key metrics and, and those kind of things. Um, they looked at cloud and they looked at how that correlates to the performance of organizations. They found that actually just using cloud, just using the public cloud, um, can actually make things worse, right? I think for the reasons that I just talked about, where there's just lots of things to think about, lots of options, um, and you know, it adds to the challenges of it. So they 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 have said that it does, um, you know, teams that are highly effective and um, make use of the cloud uh, by using it flexible, and you know, the flexibility, making use of taking advantage of the flexibility of the cloud. And I think that's really what we're talking about here. What I'm talking about here. So when we think about how do we manage multiple environments. Well, what are the kind of environments we have? We might have a software delivery process with, you know, your build, dev, QA, staging, production, whatever environments you may have. And you need, you know, uh, you know, you need the, 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 the infrastructure for each of those environments. And so when we talk about when we, we go to define infrastructure uh, environments like this as code, one of the things that people uh, pitfall they fall into is what we can call snowflakes as code. And that's where 
every environment has its own copy of the infrastructure code. And we tend to copy changes from one environment to the next. We edit the code for each environment. And so it can be very difficult. It gets very messy to manage um, infrastructure where you have separate code bases for each each environment. Um, and so uh, this, this going back to the kind of the multiple environments, another reason why we might have multiple environments, is we might have multiple production environments. So we might have different copies uh, of our of our um, production services and products, digital products and things uh, that are hosted in different countries. <clears throat> or we might have ones that are for different, um, say, SaaS customers. And maybe we each of our kind of customers that uses our, our, our digital offering, maybe we spin up a separate instance. And so we spin up infrastructure for that. Or in some cases, we have uh, kind of co-brand partners. So our business might be that we either like we, we white label our our um, our software and, and our offering, and maybe we even customize it so that we have um, again we have to like the infrastructure gets kind of has to be different between environments, which again leads to this whole kind of snowflake production environment um, issue where we have multiple copies of infrastructure code for different environments, for maybe for different countries as well as for the different. Kind of path to production testing environments and so on and so we end up with lots of copies of infrastructure code it's hard to keep it consistent it's hard to kind of fix things you know that are wrong in one and make sure that we fix them in the others and so that just becomes a big mess and so the solution to that is reusable infrastructure code and that's the idea that we have a copy of our infrastructure code a single copy of our infrastructure code uh, that we apply to each environment and we can parameterize that so that we can manage the differences between the environments and we can also as i'll talk about um, componentize it um, to make that uh, more manageable um, so we can kind of put together maybe different environments for different situations <clears throat> without having to have copies of code so what are the challenges that we get with a, a monolithic environment and by monolithic environment i mean one big environment where we have maybe multiple workloads going on multiple teams using it um, but the environment is treated as one uh, infrastructure project, one deployment, like say a Terraform project, a CloudFormation stack, Polymi stack, so on. Um, and so with a monolithic environment, everything is in for, the, for a particular environment is in one kind of code base, right? Uh, looking like this. And so the, the, this gives us challenges for software delivery, right? It gives us challenges because um, we, uh, you know, we have teams trying to share environments um, or we have, you know, maybe, uh, you know, and so it becomes a bottleneck for delivery because we, teams have to wait on each other for environments or you have multiple teams, um, you know, deploying changes into environments and breaking things and, and causing an impact on other teams. So environments can become a, a bottleneck. So how do we make our environments composable to get around this? Well, we go back to this monolithic infrastructure deployment that I mentioned, a single code base. One of the first things that people often think about is, well, well, we use modules, right? We use something like Terraform modules or, or whatever kind of libraries we have for our infrastructure as code tool. And we'll deploy, uh, you know, we'll, we'll divide, you know, we'll organize our code base into modules that way. The problem with that is the code may be modular, but the, the deployment is still monolithic. When we go to deploy our Terraform project that's been broken into modules, we run Terraform apply and all those modules get pulled together and they have to kind of run all at once. And, and, and so you still have this big mass you still have the fact that like when you make a change to something for one of the workloads, the infrastructure for one of the workloads, you're potentially going to have a negative impact on other uh, things running in, in, in that same environment because the infrastructure code is all is all together. <clears throat> so what we want to do is decompose our infrastructure deployments, um, you know, at the deployment level, at the, how it gets deployed. Right. So the multiple Terraform projects. Uh, Pulumi micro stacks, CDK stacks, those kind of things. Um, so you want to break those apart into multiple um, separately deployable pieces. Um, and so then we think about, okay, so what are those pieces? How do we organize those? Uh, well, one way is to think about having uh, the, the infrastructure that is specific to a workload. And here I think you have to get creative and, 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 and think um, in different ways than how we typically think about infrastructure. So for, for instance, networking is specific to a workload, right? Uh, or, or parts some of the networking is, right? So like things like load balancer rules and, um, you know, firewall rules and things which are uh, related to a, a particular workload, a particular application. So that infrastructure, you should kind of organize that and think about how to manage that and deploy that uh, along with the application. Um, or aligned to the application rather than putting them all together across all the applications and all the workloads. Now, there obviously are going to be some um, 
parts of your infrastructure, which are shared um, across workloads. So you might have, say, a compute cluster, container cluster, which the idea of that is it's a pool of resources um, that, that multiple workloads can share. And so you're going to have a, a single centralized version of that. Common networking and event messaging, which are what services use to talk to each other, um, are things, again, that, are, that you're likely to share. And so in reality, what you get is this kind of mixed tenancy. You get some of these deployable infrastructure components, um, which are you know, deployed specifically for a particular application, and they integrate with these kind of shared infrastructure, which may itself be broken down based on kind of technical domains like compute and, and, and networking and so on. And that can get into some kind of interesting, uh, more kind of complex scenarios here where you have, and I'll generally just like start with the bottom and, and minimal, right? So like the environment, um, you think about what has to be there in the environment and you keep that like, you know, and, and it's just, just the basics. It's really probably only like configuration. How do you manage configuration and just enough of the permissions um, to be able to deploy things into the environment? And so a lot of the things that we might think about as being um, shared, like say a network and VPCs and subnets and so on, will actually be group shared infrastructures. They might be um, components that you then deploy into the environments rather than a part of the environment itself. And that's way is how we can kind of keep the idea that we might have different networking arrangements for different uh, workloads in different environments, different scenarios, um, and to keep those kind of flexible. Right. Um, so how do we take advantage of this? How do we exploit these, these kind of idea of composable environments? What do we get from it? Well, one is going back to the delivery picture is we can kind of decouple delivery, right? So we can say that, uh, say a, a team working on a particular product can deploy their changes into their, their own, uh, here we're seeing each has their own dev, dev environment, which only has just the infrastructure that they need to deploy their and test their application. Uh, later environments might um, be used for integration testing, and then you're going to deploy multiple applications and their infrastructure into there. But that's uh, only once you've tested the, the, the applications and, and products or whatever on their own. Um, and so you know they're good before you, you try to integrate them. <clears throat> you can also um, uh, provision infrastructure on demand, right? And so this is, this is what kind of supports that picture that I showed around the, 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 the making the kind of delivery more streamlined. And so when you, uh, you know, when you need to do, to run some tests to test a particular application, that's when the infrastructure for that gets deployed. Um, and then it can get torn down afterwards. Right. And so that can be an automated process that just happens. Um, and you can do just enough environment. And so this is the idea that, well, for those dev test environments for an application, you don't need to deploy everything. You don't need to deploy your entire estate just to be able to test one application. You can use things like mocks and stubs, for services that the application depends on, and even mocks and stubs and other kind of test fixtures uh, for the infrastructure so that you don't have to deploy all of the infrastructure, um, it just just the stuff that you need to test that application. Um, and I do talk about a lot of this stuff in, in, in the book, both the second edition of the book has this kind of stuff in it, and um, I go into a bit more um, and a bit more updated in the, the third edition, which as I said, you can read on the O'Reilly platform. Um, if you have access. And so these together give you kind of a self-service, potential self-service infrastructure delivery. And I think what's important here is often people worry about when we talk about having infrastructure uh, that's self-service, that like oh, we're talking about having like development teams are going to build their own infrastructure. And, and that's a problem for development teams. You have to kind of like worry about details that, that might not be, you know, where they want to spend their time and energy thinking about. And also you worry about, well, are people going to be building that infrastructure correctly and all that. So this isn't about people like building, you know, having to build their own infrastructure and, 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 and figure out how to do that right. This is about having components, infrastructure components, um, like say a Kubernetes cluster component, a database, uh, you know, uh, as a service component, um, where you've kind of defined the infrastructure code um, as a package that teams could then, they can, they can deploy their application and that can then trigger and say, okay, it's going to deploy the, the, the database for it to kind of uh, use for, like, say for a test instance. Um, and so you know that the, the, the infrastructure that's used is proven and tested, um, <clears throat> but also those teams aren't having to wait on somebody to go and configure and build infrastructure for them. They can just kind of do it when they need it, where they need it. And so you get this kind of context-driven infrastructure deployment where an environment, a new environment might be created from a, a developer portal uh, where somebody with permission goes and says, I want to create this test environment. They put in the right information and click the button, and then the components are, are, are executed to provision the infrastructure, the base infrastructure for the environment, and the same for different platform services. And then when you deploy applications, those, those get deployed in there.
So just to kind of wrap up, the kind of key, key things that we get out of this are, so we want to define our infrastructure capabilities based on organizational value. We want to start from thinking about what are we trying to achieve? What do we need to deliver? And use that to drive the design of our infrastructure. And we want to reuse our infrastructure code across deployments decompose large environments into separately deployable infrastructure components, um, and then define and manage those, those components around kind of shareable units, things that we can share across teams. So thanks a lot for joining me. I, I hope that was helpful. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope to, to, to hear, hear, hear from you and, and um, take care. Thanks. Bye.